Many years ago, many, many years ago, when I was still an intern, and in fact a ravishing brunette, I was on a ward round and made an observation. And the observation was that patients who had similar problems, treated with the same remedy, antibiotic for infections, had very different outcomes. And this is very puzzling in terms of the model that we had been taught. And I remember turning to the prof and saying, this is very strange. We were taught that if something goes wrong, say an infection developed, we give the same or the appropriate antibiotic to two individuals with the same problem, we should expect the same outcome. And in this particular situation, the outcomes were radically different in many cases. And I turned to the prof and said, why should this be? This obviously flies in the face of the model that we were taught. I remember the prof shrugging and looking at the ground and saying, it's idiopathic. And idiopathic really is a big medical word which states that we're total idiots. And in fact, I had no real meaningful response to this question ever, in fact, from the medical profession. And so began my quest to look for this X factor which didn't exist in our literature. And in fact, I found that the psychology profession were way advanced in this particular area. In fact, they were already looking at the effects of stress on certain conditions. A, a, a good example in that situation was they were looking at stress in students at the time of exams, and they had shown already that three months preceding the exams, immune function was normal. And then around about the time of the exams, in the stress of the exams, their immune parameters dropped as measured on blood testing and they developed many ailments associated with stress. And then three months following the exams, when all the stress was over, their parameters returned to normal. The only variable that had occurred in the six month period was the stress of exams. And so it became very clear that stress may impact very much on body function. In this particular situation, it impacted on immune function. Obviously, if one impairs one's immune function, which is designed to protect us against infections, then these would become manifest. At that stage, there was very little else available except for an individual by the name of Carl Simonton, who was working in the States. He was a, an oncologist, and his wife was a psychologist. And Carl Simonton was using his remedies, his chemotherapy and radiation treatment for cancers, while his wife, in fact, did psychological intervention to those patients. And they looked at their figures and they found something very significant. And that was that with the intervention, the psychological intervention, concurrent with the ongoing oncology, there was a radically different outcome. In fact, these patients were doing far better when matched for the same cancers in other individuals who did not receive the psychological intervention. And so we see the development of the subject called psychoneuroimmunology, which is a long word often referred to as PNI, which is the effect of mind states on body function, in this particular case, the immune system. And I was very intrigued by this at that, in those early days, but realized in fact that since there was very little in the profession at large, that I would have to develop an application. And so I developed an application which supplemented the conventional treatment that we were giving and this particular application encompassed all the information that I had gleaned from the psychological literature and any other information that I could use in this situation. And so in 92, began using this as a supplement to conventional treatment and noted that in those that were receptive to the concept or embraced the concept, there was a significant improvement in terms of their outcomes. It became apparent later on in the 90s that patients of mine who were corporate based recognized the fact that the application which was directed towards enhanced wellness could also be seen to enhance performance. And so around about the mid 90s, the particular application, the triangles model, then became a wellness and performance enhancing program. And then towards the end of the 90s, another important milestone was the recognition that we needed to quantify what we were doing. In other words, we needed to quantify individuals before the intervention and then give the intervention and then be able to assess it thereafter to see in fact if individuals had moved positively or in fact negatively or stayed the same. And so the diagnostic was born in the late 90s, 
which today has become a very powerful and very accurate online diagnostic, which is used to assess individuals in the context of this particular model. Today, the triangles model in its various forms is given in the form of various workshops. It is used to train the lay public in the intricacies of this application. It is used in the corporate environment, both as a half day and a full day workshop. And very importantly, it is used to train accredited trainers and coaches who will be able to use this, who in fact access the chemistry of wellness performance and leadership and be qualified to interpret the diagnostic for their clients and patients in order to assess the effectivity of their intervention.